Can you share that microphone? Check, check. Oh, that sounds really good too. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much for uh, flying all the way over from LA, both of you. It's very, very kind of you. We're very glad to see you here. Um, lovely documentary. Now, you met um, Ronda Rousey in the gym. It, now, you, you've got all this sort of archive footage and uh, previous footage of her. Did you have a documentary in mind from the beginning? No, that movie, um, I was shooting another film. Um, uh, I'm, I've been working on the film for like 20 years. Um, I finally think of at the stage where I could finish the film. Uh, it's a movie called Faith. And I was interviewing the old man, Gene LaBelle, for that film. And I went to interview Gene, and that's where I met Rhonda. And then uh, he asked me to train her. And then as I began to that process, I kind of uncovered this story, this crazy girl living in a car. <clears throat> and most fighters I've found in my life do things in spite of, um, you know, proving everybody wrong. You, you'll never be this, you'll never be that. So they become fighters and they'll prove you wrong. Rhonda's story was the opposite. She was kind of proving her father right. So I, I found it an interesting angle. So I just decided to start making a movie. So it's a seven year process. Okay, so it's seven years. Now there's a, in the making of this, there's a lot of archive footage, interviews, uh, uh, clips of fights. Was that like a, a sort of logistic nightmare to put together to get all the rights for everything? Halloween 3, I mean 200 hours of footage. And so I sat with Scott Conrad. Scott Conrad is an old man. He got the Oscar for Rocky as an editor. Uh, when I met Scott, and at the time, I showed him some footage, but he wanted the crazy money. He was only like, you know, $7,500 a week, and <clears throat> I, I didn't have the money. I said, I can't afford to pay you, but I, so I turned it down, and then about three months later, he called me, said, I can't get this footage out of my mind. Let's work it out. So he did a deal with me. It was like 2500 a week, and it, it was a 10-week deal. I paid him for 39 weeks. We took 10 weeks to go through the footage. I mean, it was ridiculous. I just kept paying him and paying him and paying him. Yeah. And so um, we eventually you know, found a movie and all the madness, yeah. Yeah, so it's a lot to go through, a uh, heck of a lot. Now, I've noticed from watching that and watching the original that's been updated since I watched it because she's lost since then. Yes, yeah. Um, so knowing Rhonda well, what do you think she's going to do now? You know, I talked to Rhonda, you know, the loss is a loss, Muhammad Ali lost, Mike Tyson lost, we all lose, I mean, um, what she did is she changed the sport, she changed, when Rhonda went into UFC, there, it was a 20 year old company that was 18 million dollars in debt, after one year with Rhonda there was a billion dollars in front, mm. they then sold the company for 5.3 billion, to IMG William Morris, and it was all based on Ronda. She did three fights in a year, which grossed three million pay-per-view hits each at 80 bucks a hit. You can imagine the money, then the advertising. So she just completely changed the sport, a man's sport. Uh, so I said to Ronda, you know, if you want to come back, come back, but do it for yourself. Don't do it for anybody else. You've done what you've done, you know, it's already done. Yeah, so do you, do you still train with her? I, d I don't, no. 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 Okay. And so this goes on uh, pay per view next year around the world. Yeah. 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 And um, so where, 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 where can people find that? Kind of well, they're going to they're gonna make a big announcement soon. It's kind of hush hush. This is the first screening, to, so uh, I was very nervous to actually show people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a, a, a world exclusion here. The world is exclusive secret, of course. The funny thing is, I have to tell you something. So, Neil and I went to school together. And obviously I've followed him with the festival. I'm a big, big fan because what he's done with this festival is pretty remarkable. Um, <laughs> it's not about me, it's about you. But, <laughs> no, but uh, he said to me, I'd like to see the film in regard to the festival. And he said, so I showed him the movie and he sent me an email. You know, Gary, maybe a little sentimental for England. And I said, okay, Neil, well, thanks for looking. And then he called me back. He said, show us how fucking much I know. The judges love it. You're in competition. So 
It was a, it was a nice surprise. Yeah, I, I mean, if, if, if there's a, um, if I know someone, I'm not allowed to vote on whether they get shown or whether it's, it's nominated or anything like that. So I passed it on to the judges. And, and uh, is Jim here? He was one of the absolutely loved it. And uh, it's, he just, Thanks, Jim. He just raved on and raved on about it. And uh, yeah, Jim. Round of applause for Jim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I might have shown it anyway. You don't know. So anyway, yeah, well done. So let's talk about uh, you for a bit, Gary. You've, you've led a fascinating life yourself. You're a boxer. I've got some stats about your record here. Um, you're 31 fights, 29 wins, one loss, one no contest. I mean, the only loss, notably, was WBO World Middleweight fight in 91 versus no less than Chris Eubanks. An incredible record. Um, so what I, what I want to ask you is, um, you, you fought one more fight after that. Um, what was what was your thinking behind that? What made you sort of leave boxing? So you know, basically at your, at your peak. Um, well, I lost to you, Ben. Uh, the, 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 the thing was, I I was the probably uh, I think the best junior middleweight in in my country um, uh, for many years, and I, I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't get the fight that I wanted at junior middleweight, so I left my contract with Frank Warren. I had a year out, I sat the contract out, I said I'm not going to fight anymore, I'm sitting it out. And in that time, um, when the contract ran out, I got offered to fight Eubanks, which was uh, kind of quick notice, so I hadn't been training. Um, and so I took the fight, because I wanted to test myself. I thought I could beat him, and I think for most of the fight I was beating him. But I was in the greatest shape ever, and I and it was my first loss in you know 20 years or whatever that was. So I was done with the game. I was disillusioned. I said, "Fuck boxing." You know, it's, it, I, I give so much of my life to it, and I felt at that time I didn't get what I wanted out of it. But I lost, and I thought, "I'm not leaving the game losing." So I called the, um, the promoter. I said, "Get me a fight." He said, "Do you want to fight?" I said, "I don't care. Just get me any fight." I'm going out with my hands in the air. So I had one more fight, I won it, and I walked away. So you walked away, and then any regrets on that decision? Maybe, but you know, there's a, I have many friends who left the game blowing bubbles, you know what I mean? They, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a very tough business, and so I, I got out of the game, but I kept somewhat of my brain together. Yeah, yeah. That may be a, my opinion, but I, I, I came out of it pretty unscathed, yeah. so. You know, I'm happy I did that. Okay, so then you were. Uh, so we, we, before we move on to more about you, we've not we've got to bring Damon in for the film. How did you get involved uh, with with this film, there, Damon? Uh, but by the way, Damon is a super producer in his own right. He's produced Beyonce, Macy Gray, Christina Aguilera, uh, uh, you, know, you name it. He's he's produced them, and he's and he's Dion Warwick's son as well. Yeah. Why do you have to be a heartbreaker? Oh, just kidding. Anyway. Enough singing tonight, my voice is gone. I hope you guys enjoyed the song, by the way. Yeah. It's hard to sing after a long flight with Gary keeping me awake half the time on the plane. That's okay. Um, no, I, I met Gary, uh, a friend of my mutual friend, um, had brought me over to this, what's it, what's the GC market? The restaurant. And uh, I walked in and immediately, Gary was sitting in the corner and he had these pink, um, Eve Saint Laurent shoes on, and, and I was looking at him like, who is that James Bond looking guy with these pink shoes on? And um, go ahead. Bill was a fag. Well, I knew I knew right away, but that's okay. We'll leave that alone. Um, and and we just started talking, and he said he didn't know anything about what I'd done or anything, and he just said he said I, I don't know why, but I want to show you my my movie, and I said. Great, let's go watch a movie. So he lived right up the, right up the hill, we went and watched his movie, and immediately I, I said, I said, you don't know anything about me, and I don't know if I'm even right for the job, but I'd love to score your movie. And he went, he stood up and he shook my hand, and, and that's, our, that's our contract to date. I mean, we signed that little piece of paper with the publishing. So, but had I known you were paying $2,500 a week to this publisher, I mean to this editor, uh, I would have, oh, this is on camera, so sorry my, to my lawyer that 
<laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I do it any time for you, Gary. And 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 it's funny, you know, I love, really love Gary because he puts his heart out there. He really does. And he's very proud. And he was very nervous about this movie every time he shows it. He was nervous showing it just to me. And he was very nervous showing it to all of you. And and I kept telling him, we got a movie, man. He's just been so. doing vodka shots, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, let's, uh, so you, you moved to LA, and I remember this, um, to pursue acting. So you've a radical change of direction. You were still in your 20s, and um, you, so you left boxing behind. Was it, was it a difficult transition? Why acting? No, I was training out of Vegas. I had a friend who sat here, Martin Serene, who was an actor. He left Manchester to go to LA. And Martin was a very good friend of Paul Young, the singer. And um, so Martin kept saying, you've got to fucking come to LA and act. And I said, I can't act, I can't act, you know. So we ended up dragging me over, kicking and screaming. We did an acting class and I used to laugh because he was really good and I was really bad. So, um, but slowly but surely I studied and studied and uh, but my, my, Active career really is uh, was forced upon me by that young man over there. Well, I, re I remember you had an actual quite early break in a leading role in a film called Final Combination, aka Dead Connection, playing opposite Michael Madsen and um, Lisa Bonney from uh, the Cosby Show, Michael Madsen from Reservoir Dogs, and you were cast as a homicidal boxer from England. <laughs> were, were, were you uh, worried that you're already being typecast in your first big role? Yeah, I take the fifth. <laughs> yeah. any, any comments on that one? No, no, no. Uh, so in 2004, you played Cletus in Oliver Stone's film. Cletus. Sorry? Cletus. Cletus, sorry. Uh, Alexander yeah, supporting. Your son is quite sexual, I see. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, supporting Sir Anthony Hopkins, Colin Farrell, Angelina Jolie, and there's Gary amongst all these greats, doing a great job, my dad. And for me, you, you've. My favourite role, I think, to me, arguably your best role, is Sonny in Shane Meadows' Dead Shoes. Dead, my dead Man Shoes. And um, what I want to ask you is, what was it like working with these two sort of iconic big directors? And uh, that first. No, oh, it's amazing you get an opportunity, to, you know, to work with people with, you know, Shane is a very different director than Oliver, but they both have, you know, individualities for, uh, in, in art, you know, I mean, there's a lot of artists doing a lot of the same things. There's a million filmmakers, but Shane has got his own thing. Oliver always kind of finds his own thing. So, I mean, it's <laughs> it was a beautiful experience working with good people. You know, you just try and sponge and take everything in. And so, I was just very grateful to get the opportunities that, as I still am grateful when when they come along. You know. Yeah, Shane Meadows is sort of known for doing his improv improvisation techniques. Do you think this sort of helps bring out the best in actors? Well, I think he, 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 you know, when you get hired, you know, people pay, people always stop the character. The character's you, it's always you. You've got to find that part of you, whatever you're playing. What, if you're playing the serial killer, what would it take for you to go and kill people? You know, you have some people you can scratch the Mercedes, they want to kill you. Some people you're going to rape the dog, they want to. You, you find things, but it's always you. And so I think that Shane has an ability that he finds people he wants to cast for the movie, that's the guy, and then he lets the guy be the guy. And he just guides him very gently in, in, in realm to the story. But, you know, to be, to be honest and to be yourself, it, I think you're going to get the best out of, out of any kind of performance when you can bring it home and, the way you do it. Okay. Uh, well, finally, before we ask uh, if there's any questions from the audience, um, <coughs> you, you're now producing and directing. Are, are you still continue to act, or do you want to do more producing and directing, or both? A bit of both. I mean, whatever. Who'll, who'll ever hire me, you know, we'll see. But uh, my, my, my passion is, you know, making more. I, I love behind the camera far more than in front. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm doing a music director is next. He's, by the way, today his song went number one all over the world. So, uh, yeah. so I, I, I would like to just do well, well, one quick thing is because uh, um, I just want to thank a couple of people. So uh, they're not here, but my partner, my 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 lady in LA, Yinsi Lu, I would never have made this movie without her. She was incredibly uh, supportive. Damon knows her well, he's like, he's his sister. 
but I just want to thank her, even though she's not here. I want to thank the great Paul Weller, yes. who came to support me tonight. You know, it's, uh, it's independent film, as we all know, is very difficult, and so... Uh, um, That's why we have film festivals like this. Yes, and so, so for, for me, um, Paul has always been a massive inspiration, um, watching his, his music since I'm a child. But when you talk to someone and you show him some footage, Paul was in LA a, a few years ago and I showed him some, nervously showed him my footage and he, he was he's such a supporter. And at the time I wasn't sure if I was doing things right and he said, Gary, whatever you need. So, um, great thank you to, to Paul and to everybody who's been involved, to my family. John Joy Kim, the young man here, is, uh, we're doing my next film, Faith, and John is a producer and massive supporter. And again, John said to me, I'm not supporting Faith, Gary, I'm supporting you, so whatever you want to do, let's make it. So, You've got some very, thank very, you very much. good friends, Gary. Any questions from the audience for Gary about anything, his documentary, his fighting career, or his acting? Yes, madam, let me come to the microphone. Yes. Um, Steve Collins is uh, reportedly making a comeback into boxing. Have you thought about doing the same? <laughs> no. <laughs> See my belly? Be match with you, Ben! That's not a belly. Um, it's, not, it's not a question. Um, it's... I um, I have a 15-year-old daughter who's five foot three and sports mad and after watching this movie today i have got to get it for her for christmas because it is such an inspirational movie for her because she's fighting every day to be better than all the girls wow. god bless her so thank you thank you god bless you thank you any more questions from the audience yes ma'am When you were shooting the documentary, did Ronda ever have like any doubts? Because obviously the UFC world was quite um, not always welcome to women. It women was she ever sort of doubting herself with the unfairness of sort of being in a male sport? And yeah, I'm sure. I mean, we all doubt ourselves, you know, and so it's part of the the process. But um, she has an unbelievable desire, which is the first thing. And, and a work ethic. And I think, you know, impossible is just something that no one's done yet. So I, I'm a big believer. If you believe it, you see it, you can do it. And, uh, you know, fuck those people who say you can. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, everybody, I think we've uh, enjoyed all the films tonight. Uh, we've, let's have a round of applause for Gary and Damon once more, please. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. Well, you know, we got one more question here. Besides itself, Gary, I much I love him. Uh, there was something about the world eyes about the world sea. Uh, I'd like to say, would you kindly tell the story about this wonderful lady who told me acting while we were sleeping in the same sofa with Marlo Pranto in Los Angeles? Wow. I think that's a very beautiful, fucking beautiful story. I hear that many times on my own and you. And I think you should share that with all the audience. Uh, okay, I don't know when I bore you with my life, but I, I, um, I was on a parking meter in LA and uh, this old woman parked in front of me and she reversed into the space and two kids tried to get in the same space and they got into a fight and so the kids jumped out of the car. The old lady locked her window and the guy hit the window, trying to get her to move the car and then he snapped the windshield, wiped her off the car. <clears throat> At that point I jumped out and I said, what the fuck's wrong with you? You know, it's an old lady. So he pulled a knife on me. So I said, what are you going to do with that little knife? And there was a young kid, I was in my, I just retired from boxing, so I was like 25. This kid was like 18, a little Mexican boy in, in a, one of them gangbanger trucks. He pulled a knife on me. I said, I said, what are you going to do with that little fucking peanut knife? I said, you're going to make a little hole and then I'm going to rip your fucking eyes out your skull. So what do you want? And he shit himself and he left. And the old lady, I got her out of the car, I parked the car. And we had a conversation and she said, I owe you lunch. 
would you like to have lunch? And I said, sure. So we, she gave me a number. And my friend got in the car and recognized the name and said, you know who she is? I had no idea. And she was the fam most famous acting coach in America at the time. She told Brando, Sidney Portier, Dustin Hoffman, and all these people. So we went to uh, meet her and uh, Sidney Portier was doing poetry in her class. And I sat at the back and I said, I want to be an actor. And that's how I kind of began the journey. But I used to do private um, lessons with her sometimes and I used to go to her house and she used to sit me in the living room and we'd do the work on the material and the phone would ring and she'd say, oh, okay, I'm ready. And she'd put the phone down, she'd go in the kitchen, she'd make a cup of tea and a sandwich and she'd put the sandwich in the living room with the tea. She'd come back to the kitchen where we were working and then I would hear the back door open and someone would come in and then I would hear drinking it loud, fucking horrible and, and then and it, that went on for 20 years and I never ever asked her who it was and I never ever snuck a peek but one time um, not long before he died uh, this the door opened and I heard the and she went to the bathroom and then my curiosity got the better of me and I sneaked in the living room and looked and it was fucking Marlon Brando. <laughs> and I went back and sat down and she came downstairs and I must have been blushing I said, she's right, you went in the fucking living room, didn't you? She said, I love you, you've been loyal for 20 years but you're a prick now, get out. <laughs> Anyway, that was a man and my so. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Anything you want to say? Just want to say thank you guys so much for coming. I'm so proud of Gary and so proud of your movie, man. And I look forward to faith and many more. Okay, everybody, that's it for tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it. There's only two nights left. Short film night on Friday and the big finale on Saturday. We've got Mark Steele giving us a comedy.